The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement. Hello and welcome to the ASCO Guidelines podcast series. My name is Shannon McKernan and today I'm interviewing Dr. Hetty Kindler from the University of Chicago, lead author on treatment of malignant pleural mesothelioma, American Society of Clinical Oncology Clinical Practice Guidelines. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Kindler. I'm delighted to speak with you today. So first, can you give us a general overview of what this guideline covers? Well, since these are the very first guidelines that ASCO has ever done for mesothelioma, we felt that it was important that they be really comprehensive. Thus, our multidisciplinary panel performed a systematic review of the medical literature and generated over 60 recommendations addressing five main clinical questions. We wanted to know what is the optimal approach to obtain an accurate diagnosis of mesothelioma, what initial assessment is recommended before initiating therapy, what is the appropriate systemic treatment, what is the appropriate role of surgical SADA reduction, and when should radiation be recommended. And what are the key recommendations of this guideline? There are so many, but there are six things that I would emphasize. In terms of pathology, mesothelioma should be reported as epithelial, sarcomatoid, or biphasic, not simply as malignant mesothelioma, because these subtypes have clear prognostic significance. A thoracoscopic biopsy should be performed in patients for whom treatment is planned. This will enhance information available for clinical staging allow for histologic confirmation of diagnosis, enable more accurate determination of the pathologic subtype, and make material available for additional studies such as molecular profiling. We know that chemotherapy improves survival and quality of life in this disease. The recommended first-line chemotherapy is pemetrexed plus a platinum. The addition of bevacizumab improves survival in select patients and may be offered to those with no contraindications. There is insufficient evidence to support pemetrexid maintenance in mesothelioma patients, thus it is not recommended. We recommend that a maximal surgical SIDA reduction be performed in selected patients with early-stage disease. This involves either extrapleural pleuropneumonectomy or lung sparing options, such as a pleurectomy decortication or an extended pleurectomy decortication. These lung sparing options should be the first choice due to decreased operative and long-term risk. An extrapleural pneumonectomy may be offered in highly selected patients when performed in centers of excellence. Since surgical SIDA reduction is not expected to yield an R0 resection, multimodality treatment with chemotherapy and or radiation should also be administered. And this treatment decision should be made with multidisciplinary input. Radiation therapy should be offered as an effective treatment modality to palliate patients with symptomatic disease. And why is this guideline so important, and how will it change practice? This is truly the most authoritative, comprehensive, evidence-based set of recommendations ever performed for pleural mesothelioma. It should serve as an invaluable resource for anyone who treats these patients. And finally, how will these guideline recommendations affect patients? I think it is especially important that there be guidelines for the less common diseases. Only about 3,000 new cases of mesothelioma are diagnosed in the United States each year. Since many clinicians only see a handful of these patients, they may be less familiar with how to diagnose and treat the disease. 
By providing clinicians with a comprehensive resource, we hope these guidelines will lead to more evidence-based treatment and thus better outcomes for patients affected by this disease. Great. Thank you for your insights on this guideline, and thank you for your time today, Dr. Kindler. My pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to all of our listeners for tuning into the ASCO Guidelines podcast series. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, please rate and review the podcast and refer the show to a colleague. 